how to lose $40,000 in five seconds. Every morning, one of my first things that I do is I tell myself today it's going to be a good day and I make the bet. Then I start thinking about stuff and I'll grab a phone and look and see what sales I had the night before. I am grateful for a $5 sale as well as a $50,000 sale. I am really grateful for that. And what happens to people is that they become somewhat not grateful, ungrateful, take a lot of stuff for granted. One of the hardest things that you can do in making money in any business is getting customers. That is the hardest thing. It's the most expensive thing. It's something you have to do consistently. Once you get customers, you have to be appreciative. I've got some people who don't like the fact that I change stuff up so much. I understand that. That's cool. I still have some people who love it. With that, I've got people who've been here on this channel who have bought every product that I put out for the last eight years. Really thankful for that. And I'm very appreciative of that. And I don't forget it. One of the things with making money online is people do not want to talk to people. For some of you who've been here earlier, this around this time last year, I talked to a lot of you. I got on the phone, talked to you hour for free. A lot of people online who will not do that because they think they can get big money out of someone and they never talk to them. This isn't physical products. You can sell a car online and virtually not talk to someone. Intellectual property, products, services, consulting. Typically you need to talk to people. I've got a client and we're going to build out probably three or four websites, but I was trying to hire somebody. If you were on my page, you saw that I was asking for recommendations for website development. A friend recommended a friend. And I'm like, you know, dude's cool. So this deal was done. If he said, hey, this is the person, it was just pretty much, okay, let's get started. That's how the deal was done. He, my friend, cued her in on the Facebook post and she never responded. I was like, you know, maybe she's busy. I sent her a Facebook request. I didn't hear anything. And I was like, you know, a lot of people don't like that. I can respect that. Then I went to her website. I sent, fill out this questionnaire, did all this other stuff and sent it to her. And then she gets back to me with quote, our minimum is this, this, this. We're not a good fit. Good luck finding someone else. It's hundred percent clear. She didn't want to work with me for whatever reason, but I didn't get into it. I did not put or even say that there were other websites that are going to be dealt because it usually sounds like bullshit. It's like, well, you know, we got massive projects, but really we do. I just I called him a dude and I said, look, let me tell you what your, what your friend did. He blown the fuck away. This chick lost $40,000 worth of business because she didn't want to do this. Let's have a five minute discussion. That's, that's what the big, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give y'all some knowledge here because one of the reasons I'm grateful for those um, $5 sales, those $10 sales, I know what it's like to go days weeks and months without a sale. There are a lot of people who, who take this stuff for granted. <laughs> My friend was just so blown away by this behavior because this also showed, and this is the lesson for y'all, also showed a lack of salesmanship. Now, if someone did that, let's say I had the same process. Once again, I have no problem with their process, but they have no sales skills whatsoever because I'm going to give it to you. To sell office furniture, people would tell me their budget. And I would completely ignore it. I had this lady that's like, okay, our, our budget is 25000 And I said, okay, okay, well, what you need? And we get into it. And then there's this thing, this thing call center came up. Now, call centers are usually really easy to, because, you know, it's a bunch of people crammed up in, you know, really little cubicles. Sometimes companies kind of give their people more room. We're going to do 30 offices, do a call center for 30 grand. You can't even do that shit refurbed. You can't. It's just, just not going to happen. I said, look, that's unrealistic. And I took pen and paper and I went to Craigslist and I said, look, if you're buying this stuff used, here you can is, hey, you know, if I don't get the business, no problem. You can go here and use. And the problem you're going to find out if you try to buy stuff on Craigslist, you're not going to be able to buy 30 offices that are going to be congruent. You're going to have hodgepodge furniture. So your place is going to be looking all crazy. And I just showed the client, walked her through it. And it's like, here, 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 here. The real dude who was in the office, but see, she was the front woman. But the real dude, he came across my shoulders. We were looking at stuff. We was just saying, I was like, it's just not going to work. And he says, you know, thank you for educating us because we really didn't know what to set the budget because we don't know anything about furniture. I feel, you know, based on what you said, you know, if we needed to go to 150,000, we could. Why? Because I didn't go ahead and what's this thing? It's like, I'm not afraid to put in work. That's what they told me. 
So if, if any of you are out there are sales or consulting and you've got this online process where people fill out these forms, you could be missing so much money because you don't want to pick up the phone and actually talk to somebody. It could be stunning. I'm telling you another story. Um, I was dealing with this company up in Marietta. Typically corporates companies work on purchase order and stuff. We were a boutique furniture. This was when I still had a job. And our deal was we had to get 50% of what the bill was going to be to even get to work. So not only did I have to sell them the furniture, I had to convince them to change their purchasing process and write me a big ass check. And they just met me and I did it. And so some, some companies were like, nope, you ain't doing the purchase order. And I couldn't get that business. Just for my dudes and dudettes who are running businesses, learn how to sell, learn how to pick up the phone, learn how to have a sales process. Because that was the thing that got me money on the table, but because they have this uh, hustler porn based thing, very few people are going to give you a hundred thousand dollars by going to your website and clicking a few links. Very few. <laughs> it's usually going to be a conversation involved. Let's see. What, what do we have in here? Uh, David, response time is key. A prospect reaches out and you need to reply quickly to get the business. Pretty much. Rob Nelson, I worked sales a long time. You can't make judgments. I sold cars to the shabbiest looking people for cash. In my retail store, same thing. A person who walks in saying they're just looking and ended up spending hundreds. Uh, mommy, wait, wait, it shocks me how many people don't like or want to talk to people. I watched my 22 year old stepson have a mini panic attack when he had to call a doctor and change his appointments. <laughs> Damn. Grateful for every dollar. Yes, Erica. Yes. Is there a good book for the sales process? Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine. Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine. Now, I'm going to go a little deeper because, you know, you Google Glenn and Cameron, I am very easy to find online. There's a bunch of shit about me. Most of it good, some of it bad. What I think happened was on my, you know, on my personal page, I don't really do a lot of business stuff anymore. Every now and then I'll post some, but I just kind of post, you know, I'm into the fuckery mode right now with Facebook. Often Facebook is for fuckery. I know some people are using Facebook to make massive amounts of money and under other stuff, but I'm not really feeling Facebook right now. So I use it to be personable and sociable. And I put all kinds of stuff up there. And I know that some of it may offend some people. And I think that she may be a Trump person and she saw some of my stuff and that was the deal. So hopefully her people will continue to pay her money because I'm not going to put her name out. I'm not going to bash her business. And I did not call her or email her or say anything. I feel that my fiduciary duty is not to her. It's to you guys who support the show, who come in and watch and to give you some insights from the other side, how you can fuck up a lot of money by just being lazy. <laughs> just lazy. Is real. David, how do you balance those requests for a discount for a first order? I tell like everyone pretends they're going to do a relationship and hold out and ask you for a discount when they just want a one off. Uh, be honest with them. Just size them up. The more that you interview people and the more that you have these sales process conversations, the more that you're going to figure that out. And you can just say, look, you don't have to make love to me to get a good deal. Where are you? What can we do? What needs to happen to make business? And just treat it like that. Because typically, like I said, there will be other websites. I don't, br I don't, I don't bring that up. Like with the other person I'm going with, I'm not even bringing that shit up. I'm going to see how they do the first one. And if they do a good job, then they'll get the other ones. Uh, CJ Lee, I have a company that does our wedding dress preservation. No woman will give you her wedding gown and 175 to be clean without talking to you first. I may get banned from this group, but um, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't even have to go into the group. Hold on a second. I don't, I don't even have to do that. I'm going to put this up here because I read this yesterday. Yeah, I don't have to go in the group to show it to you. I can just take you to the site. I have a question. I have an LLC. If I buy your products, can I legally deduct that for taxes? If you buy my products as things to improve your business, yes. <laughs> you can legitimately too. No bullshit. Lamo, all right. Um, Melissa V. I'm happy to leave it up to the customer what they prefer to call text, but no, I don't care if it's five dollars sale or three hundred sale. I can get the happy feeling from happy customers. Come to the streams. You want to talk about what you do? Because 
I, one of the reasons that I'm pumping the music is I know that a lot of you are making friends and y'all are networking and hooking up with each other. And that's cool. That's that's called community. Do that. Uh, I've also saw yesterday that a lot of y'all want like a Facebook group. I'm in the process of her hiring a community manager because this here's the problem with doing business online. And I see this coming. A lot of folks are going to continue to do stuff the way they're doing it and they're going to fail. People are sick of automated webinars. They're sick of uh, these slick promotions. They're, they're, they really want to connect with someone. So the process is I'm trying to hire a school teacher, someone who was a school teacher who knows how to teach people to be the community manager and answer the phone and stuff like that. So we can have like a real community where you can actually talk to real people because one of the things that I'm seeing and I'm seeing it over and over and over again, no one wants to fill out this long ass application when this problem could be solved in a seriously two minute conversation on the phone. So I'm going to spend, because the thing that pissed me off was I spent like 15 minutes filling out the survey and shit. Let's talk about pricing. I tell you how expensive I am. You know, if you want to work with me on a long-term basis and build some stuff out, it's 15 grand. Yes, 15, no typo, up to 50 Gs a month. That's what it is. If you can't afford it or we can't work together, that's what it is. Now, just because you don't tell people your price it's not like you go like, well, I don't tell them that it's 10000 and then they go to the website, oh, I didn't know it was 10000 but they, oh, no, that's not going to work. So that's another thing, because if I had knew what the prices were, I could have governed myself accordingly. It was within the budget, and it went, once again, this is all of this stuff with hustler porn. This is all the stuff that unseasoned business people who are running around like they're running real businesses who are losing money left and right. Roderick, damn, I see. I put up an erotable book and it, and it knows that I have went from paid to free. Douglas, erotic and dirty books. Thank you very much, sir. How does it include this? Romance is the biggest category of literature ever. That includes those Harlequin romance. That includes um, Bigfoot rape me. Yes, there is Bigfoot erotica, vampire erotica, um, Male is male on male sex, you know, gay erotic. I mean, it's huge. And 90% of the people reading these books are women. It is huge, 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 huge. So you've got a good storyline or you've got a good series. Uh, BDSM sells like like uh, water to people in the desert. I mean, it's crazy. I'm saying I'm local. I live in Midtown. Used to be near Krispy Kreme in the West End. <laughs> You know where I was. That's funny. That's funny. No, uh, here, here's uh, one of the things that I'm doing is, you know, and this is part of the gratitude thing. And this is kind of going to abundance. What do I know how to do very well? Start businesses and make money. So that's where these conversations are going, because can I write a book and sell it on Amazon and make money? Yeah, I can do that. But I'm not known for that. So but I'm known for business, you know, from 2009 up to now, I'm known for business and that's just an easier sell. So I could do a webinar on that, but someone who has like 10 erotica books, has a blog about erotica and they put on the webinar, I could be better than they are, but they're known for it. They can make 20 times as much money than I can. I see it every day. So what I'm doing is I'm staying in the G lane. We're gonna start businesses. We're gonna free people from their jobs. We're going to create that. That's where I'm. That's where I'm at. That's what's going to happen. So more than likely, that's probably not ever going to happen with the me doing a writing book workshop. Or I'm not going to do it because the thing is, that's not what I'm known for. Even though I know how to do it, just a great deal. Joseph Murphy, you should act like a wealthy man, even if you're not. But on the other hand, I don't want to spend money on cars, clothes, and alcohol. What's your opinion on that? Being wealthy now, that's hustler porn. Great deals. That's hustler porn. I know people who are 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 50 million rich, and two of them have regular cars. Now, they all have bumping ass houses because they have families. I mean, you got a family of five, six people. Large house makes sense. But you know, one guy, he's worth like 40 million. He drives a Honda. He does not give a shit about cars. His thing is his family and vacations. This dude will spend 50 G's to go to Europe for three weeks in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat, probably does it two or three times a year. So you can be wealthy in what your manner of wealthy is, not what this person, because hustle porn, 
Hustle porn is predicated to tantalize the hindbrain of males between 16 and about 26. That's what the Ty Lopez stuff is aimed for. It's not aimed for someone who's 40 with a family. That's not what it's aimed for. It's aimed for those young kids out of high school because there's just three things they care about. Pussy, cars, and money. And in that order, they just have the money to get to one and two. That's what they care about. Pussy, money, and cars. Or pussy, cars, and money. And what do you see on Ty Lopez's show? Cars and hot chicks. He's giving what that demographic wants. That's why I think he's brilliant. I don't think he's a scam artist, any of the things. And what many people do is look at his stuff and they make judgments, but his message isn't for them. And this is something else. Good marketing automatically alienates people that it's not for. So his message isn't intended for me. It's not intended for this 45-year-old guy with a family in Iowa or Kokomo, Indiana. It's not for those guys. It's for those guys who are in, in high school, who are trying to figure out what they want to do. No, no one's there to talk to them. Maybe dad is there, but he ain't really cool. But Ty, you know, and Ty's been lifting weights and and, and, and getting his stuff together, right? And it's like, he looks cool. He's walking around. It's like he's working out in the gym with three hot chicks. I want to do that because when you're 16 to 25, that's what you want to do. <laughs> That's what you want to do. You're not trying to build any legacy. You see a girl, you're not looking at her personality. <laughs> Sell people with the bond. So, you know, be wealthy in your own way. You know, it's your choice to be how you want to display your wealth or not display your wealth. You know, those other writers can only write. They can't talk. That's part of it. Oh, no, I use pen names. Only on business books, I use my real name. Uh, other stuff, pen names. G ranks. I bought some breakfast and coffee today. How'd that go down? They felt like they won the lottery, didn't they? Oh, okay. Uh, good morning. Can you give us some wisdom on how to be successful online marketing? Same thing I told the writer. Find an audience. There's a guy on Facebook. Um, I forget his name, but he talks to people who run service businesses, and all his friends are service businesses. He does a live stream. They're there. He puts a post, 200, 300 likes consistently. Why? He knows his audience and he set up his Facebook thing for his audience. So they're getting what they want. He's putting out what they want. And it's a win. So if you want to be successful online, find an audience and treat them very well. Uh, no podcasting yet. I'm at my bandwidth with my current client load, so that's the reason I'm hiring people. I don't have the room to do that stuff. And also, I know starting the podcast or some other stuff, that is probably not going to make any money for six months to maybe a year. So I don't have a lot of bandwidth, and I know it's not going to make any money, so I'm not really fucking with it right now. Philmon, is there a country you think you can't be successful in? There's a lot. All right, let, let's just have the United States, and this is something else to be grateful. If your parents were fucking in America and you have American citizenship and you go out and get yourself an American passport, you are fucking blessed, okay? Um, you go to another country, there's just things you can't do. I was talking to a banker who's Nigerian. We had an hour-long conversation when she was opening up these accounts and we were talking about this. There are places, you just can't do this. I think with my... A, you know, I've got I got a little bank, okay? That makes bank, you know, here's a tip. You can go any country in the world and say, and go in as with an investor visa that, hey, I'm going to employ people. And they're like, come in, come in. Yes, yes, come on in. So when you have money, you can go anywhere and be successful if you already have it. Now, going to some country, don't know the language, don't have any money, that shit's hard. Because number one, you're a foreigner and they're going to treat you like a foreigner. These folks are not going to even talk to you. They're like, we're not going to talk to you. So that's hard. There's a difference between new and old rich. Yep. Wealthy people hustle for freedom. Tony Yang, that P. <laughs> I like that. He was so surprised. He said, thank you, thank you. He was, I'm telling you, people feel like they won the lottery because folks don't do that stuff. 
Congratulations, man. No, and it also made you feel good, didn't you? Yeah, North Korea is one of them. <laughs> There's a lot of countries, man. I'm not, I put out in the stream yesterday, I'm not leaving the United States. I may have a place in another country to visit. I'm not leaving the United States. I'm not going anywhere. I know how good it is here. All that stuff, like, well, Trump becomes president. I'm moving to Canada. Why? <laughs> Why? Where are you going? I'm telling you, if you get out of this country for six months, Little shit that you don't even think you would have missed, like bacon, M and M's, ginger. Just, just a lot of stuff you can't get. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, Fifteen G's a month. You're a corporate consultant at their price. I know I'm in the wrong place. Glad to see you are driving. Well, here's the thing. And I was having this conversation with a client this morning about this. Uh, who I have that I'm working with, I love what they're doing. They're all fun people. It's exciting, man. It's just exciting. Plus, I, I'm, it's elitist. Fuck it. it. It'll come off as elitist. I had the problems that 90% of the YouTubers in resale are talking about today. I had those fucking problems in 2002. It's 2017. I don't want to talk about that shit anymore. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Just don't. Uh, I had someone sell something for me on eBay. Um, I went ahead and ripped out the hard drive of my MacBook, the 17 inch, because the graphics card was gone. And I'm just like, I don't really use it. I need a smaller MacBook anyway. So I went and got a used one. And they actually pulled the hard drive out and sold it on eBay. And the person I had been selling it on eBay was like, you know, people were, I was like, just leave it alone. And this guy was just like, hey, you know, the shipping's too, I was like, ignore him. He's not going to win. And, you know, they were just like, I was like, ignore him. Leave it alone. I, you know, put it, I said, put it up at 99 cents. They didn't, it was like, well, put it up at 99, no, 99 cents. It went for $310, the highest sale in months, because I know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> you know? And I'm just, they were just blown away. It's like, wow, that really went well. And the person instantly paid because it was a hot item. Why did that, this work? Because the 17-inch MacBook Pro, they don't make them anymore. And a lot of people like to customize them, rip out the optical drive, put in two SD drives, jack up the um, RAM, and turn it into a fucking supercomputer. I knew someone was good because I wanted two something. I was like, I'm going to get two something. I'm good. I bought the thing for 3500 like seven years ago and that sucker made a thousand videos it did its job so those kind of things it's just i'm not excited about that stuff i'm just not and that's one of the reasons that i switched up who i consult with and like i said in the future i'll do boot camps and stuff but yeah i don't want to do that stuff um martella c marcellus t my bad glennon what do you call a guy that makes 40 to 100k and his expenses are 25 a month. Shit, that used to be me, dude. I call that motherfucker smart. <laughs> Here's the thing. There's this thing called lifestyle creep. Um, my expenses in the last few years have gone, have tripled. Um, from 2009 to very recently, I was in an apartment. They made no bones about it. I was in an apartment, two bedroom apartment. One bedroom, one bedroom was the office. Because I don't, you know, after my partner died, I, I lived in her house and I helped her. I just really didn't want any fucking responsibilities. So my rent was, and people thought my rent was high. My rent was like twelve hundred on gas. My total outlay, including cable, was about thirteen hundred bucks a month, and I didn't have a car payment. I was happy. <laughs> I didn't really. It was just me. I didn't really need anything. So I didn't, you know, lifestyle creep is really. Um, a decision because people feel they get more money. They have to do certain things. All of my decisions and moving and where I live were strategic. I live in this neighborhood for a reason, not because it's a super nice house. I live here because, I'll give you an example. One neighbor is a fucking rocket scientist. Another neighbor is a specialized psychiatrist Another, I mean, it's just people, decision makers, and people who can connect me to other people. That's why I'm here. No other reason. So that motherfucker is smart, Martellus. Uh, Glennon, 
JC, I feel excited about what I see about Trump. He seems very good sense of urgency. I see he has a very good sense of urgency. What do you think about him for the policies he signed already? I'm grateful. Uh, wait 18 months. Just wait. A lot of this is window dressing because he's signing executive orders and none's happened yet. Chris, it's much harder to get personal credit, much less bid credit in Nigeria when, uh, oh, could be. I don't know about credit in Nigeria and stuff. I know that we as Americans and to some degree people in Europe and other countries, there's a lot of folks who don't use credit cards in the world. They're cash and carry. For mom, what's your thoughts about the largest woman protest against Trump? The funny thing is there was people who voted for Trump protest. Um, like I said, I'm going to tell you, wait 18 months. Just wait 18 months because here's the thing. Right now, there's a big-ass honeymoon period. He signed a few things. Uh, recently, he gave some guy $10,000. People are in love with him. Now, all this stuff is simple shit he can do. When it comes to the hard part, the real stuff that where people are really hurting, and when that shit doesn't happen, we'll see. Linda B., I always thought being grateful for what you have works contrary to make more money because yet you, you need to keep a hunger to strive for more. Actually, those are two components. Okay. Uh, Strip, I don't have to work. I choose to work because I'm only 50 years old and I was 100% retired and I got bored as fuck. I, I don't think that I was just wired just to sit around and just do nothing or to quote, find shit to do to entertain myself. I love what I do. So there is purpose and there is gratitude. A person, let's go with um, Tom Brady. Tom Brady, you know, he can sit down and he good. But there's this fire in his belly. Uh, not as much fire as I think in the Atlanta Falcons belly, but there's this fire. You know, he makes 20, 30 million a year. Yet yeah. every year he shows up and he performs. That is not about money. That's about hunger. That's purpose and drive. Being happy is waking up and being grateful to be alive. That's a wonderful thing. The converse is you don't wake up, your ass is dead. So it isn't contrary. You're trying to frame two concepts into one. One can be extremely grateful for everything they have and be hungry as hell. Two different things. Ah, see, I said nothing about satisfied. I said grateful. Grateful like, okay, great. Let's, let's go ahead because words are very important. When the waiter comes over and gives you good service, you're grateful, right? Now, if you are satisfied, you never go back to that. It's like, man, that was the best hamburger ever. I never needed any other hamburger. That's satisfied. Grateful is appreciating the moment with the relevance that it deserves. Satisfied is I'm done. Once again, you're trying to frame two concepts, that's four, bam, into one concept. It's, it's, do, it's different things. It's different. It's split concepts. It's not the same thing. Okay. English is not your first language. Okay. I get that. So how can you be grateful but stay unsatisfied with your current level? Because you've got work to do. That's purpose. You know, I'm not trying to be mean, but look up the word purpose. Go to Google, look up purpose and look up grateful and look up satisfied and you will have a better understanding of what I'm saying since English isn't your first language. Ava Anderton, thanks for the tip on using a pen name. I thought selling books required an offer, requires an offer platform, but with a pen name, you can't do videos or use your real photo. How do you do this with a pen name? Once again, going back to audience, if you pick the right audience and you write a shit ton of books, I wrote 30. And I just and they were like, oh, I like this one. They came back. I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't do a website, I didn't do a blog, I didn't do videos. I it's like, okay, I'm gonna put it to you your your chick, but I'm gonna put it like this because you know, this channel is most of the guys, most people watch this channel dudes. How easy is it to get pussy from a girl that already likes you? Real easy, right? Same thing with an audience. If you give an audience that already appreciates what you're putting out, it's very easy to get money from them. What most people do is, 
I love this. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Here, I don't want that. Here, I don't want that. Take it, I don't want it. Fucker, you don't appreciate art. <laughs> That's what most readers do. <laughs> That's what they do. And then they'd be like, they don't know real literature. <laughs> they didn't want that shit. <laughs> they didn't want it. That's what it is. So <laughs> you can do a lot with a pen name. You just have to you be good. I want to move out bad. One of my main reasons for starting the business. Uh, okay. Uh, not often. Someone recognized me in Ikea this, uh, a few weekends ago. That was about it. Not often. All right. Here, here's the thing. Another reason that I live where I live. These people don't watch YouTube. Not like you do. They don't watch YouTube. These folks still, I mean, one of my neighbors, he don't fucking email. His assistant does that shit. They don't even know who the fuck I am. I'm walking around. I could be like, they don't know. I, no one. It's just when I go to certain parts of town and I see younger folks, they go, eh, hustle, come Well, actually, I had one of these shirts on. That was another reason. But if I didn't have a hat on and if I had a dress shirt on, it may not even recognize me. That Clark Kent Superman shit, it's real. It's real. Constructive discontent lead the field. Purpose-driven life, yep. So... It's just you give people what they want because, like, I keep framing stuff in dating. If a girl really, really likes you, right, and she just looks at you and go, "Yeah, he can get the panties." You just go over to her and be normal and be like, "Hey, you know, I think I want to take you home." Okay, she's already made that decision. So when you deal with an audience that already makes the decision, I like skateboards, I like red tea kettles, I like cookies, and you give these people things they already like, the money just. Here, here's money. You want money? Here, here, here's money. You want here's some more money. It's the audience. It's the marketplace. It's not your product. It's not. I've been there. Tony, thinking about starting a new business that sells pro a product. My current business is totally different. I don't want to come out of my pocket thinking about selling on eBay and Craigslist to raise the money. Any advice for eBay? Um. But structure that a little bit better because it sounds like you want to make money without spending money and you can do that, but you got a lot of sweat equity. Grateful versus satisfied. Like when a playoff team puts unfinished business on the wall. Pretty much. It's a big difference. <laughs> I mean... I was in five writing groups when I started this thing, and I always got into, I, I actually put this in the group, and I said, your book is a product, and those folks jumped on me. They were, like, coming with pitchforks and torches. It's like, Glenn, then we're going to kill you, Glenn. I mean, it was horrible. And years later, so a lot of them came around like, damn, he was right. Which you could incorporate if you're starting an SEO niche focus agency just for so or just so proprietorship. I would not incorporate until I got some money coming through that business. That's my advice to you. Hi, although I'm a chick, I feel you and understand your reply. I love your videos and thanks so much for doing these live streams. All right, Ava, cool. Uh, custom cuts. What's your real estate portfolio looking like? Multifamily, single panels, commercial? Nothing. At the moment, zilch. I'm what they call liquid. I'll talk about that some other time. There's a lot of ways that you can have assets that are not property that perform very well. There's a lot of stuff out there. This is not, quote, an investment channel, but there's a lot of things you can do. And probably with this new business, we will go into commercial because it's always been the dream to go in and pay cash for a building. It's like I'm buying this building. Here's the bag. Boom. So, yeah. Part of this thing, and I'm going to go a little farther with Coates Customs because this kind of goes with this whole thing of what, if you get wealthy, there are certain things that you should do. Okay. There are certain called T-bills. There, there's so many things that are super fucking safe that you can put your money in and just have money that have nothing to do with real estate. Um Part of the thing is many people, and that's one of the things that I want to do a better job on, is educating folks on what's out there. 
There's so many things out there. You can own commercial real estate through a REIT and actually never own the building, just depending on how they manage this stuff. Tawana, hey, Glenn, I need to market my text prep business and my family is not supporting us. Any advice? Girl, what are you doing here on this stream? You need to be out in the street with flyers because this is your season. Uh, no one knows you. You're going to have to hustle. You're going to have to tell everyone you know. You're going to have to bully people because you only got a minute to do that. Avery, 30 books is quite a feat. What does your book writing process look like? Do you start with an outline? I always start with an outline. I do not write from the seat of my pants in terms of where there's pantsers and there's plotters. I am a plotter because when you pants and then you lose your way, you can spend weeks on a book that's going nowhere. I plot everything out. Uh, for show, big baby man, I was going to do a YouTube channel like you, big bro, but none of my prospective customers watch YouTube and many are not even online. Now, I'm going to repeat that what for show because I like saying this name for show, big baby. I was going to do a YouTube thing like you, but none of my prospects and customers watch YouTube. Dude, you just said some gold. You actually recognize that the people you want to sell to are not here that's amazing that's great that's awesome because you saved yourself a lot of frustration everybody ain't on youtube okay like i said i'm 50 years old just you know i don't look 50 and i don't act 50 but to sell to people like me print cards work uh mailers work sending shit in the mail works tv ads as seen on television works because a lot of these people don't want to fuck with technology You've ever seen somebody get a phone and they get frustrated with text and be like, here, text for me. You see grandma, you see auntie, you see them do that shit because they're like, I don't want to fuck with this. I want, <laughs> or do, do, do. that's what they want. <laughs> you can, I'm telling you, you got to know your audience. So for show, big baby, congratulations. That's beautiful because you're on your way to making money. Uh, I deal with local business owners. I've got to go out and go to them, searching for ways to make it easier. Pimping ain't easy. Okay, for sure, big baby, I'm going to save you a lot of time. Triple what you're doing because here, here's the life of a business owner. If they're making money, they're busy as fuck. And the last thing they want to do is watch some YouTube videos with like you, you, you got a six million, seven, ten million dollar year business, and your personal income is high sixes or low sevens. After taxes, you're trying to keep your shit the way it is because you could pay cash for a car. Your house is paid for. There's money, there's more money in the bank. You forget how much money you have in the bank. They're not looking to do hustler porn. They're like, I'm not. I'm going to build a hundred million dollar business. No, no. They're just like, how can I make my life easier and better? And if you have a solution like that, you can get their money. So for show, big baby. If I had t-shirts, I would give you one because you're putting in some serious, serious knowledge. Because that's what you have to do for certain categories. Everything is not online yet. Fully, ninety percent of all commerce. It's done offline in 2017. 90%. So for show, big baby, keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get paid. Tony Yang, the P, basically just was used for eBay as selling clothes for fundraising to convert into a new business. Uh, look at your business model better and see if you can actually start that business and make some money. Mo Grizzly, that's a good point. I'm telling you, a lot of these cats are not on that computer. They're too damn busy. Well, that's true. I am going to miss out on Bitcoin. You're 100% correct. Uh, I think Vanguard's excellent. Avery Brown. Oh, man, y'all are coming hard today. Writing books. And marketing a book is two different things. My tips on how to market and sell books. Number one, and this is the thing, start marketing your book as you write it. And every writer I talk to about this, they're just like, I can't do that. I don't know how it's going to like, okay, it's going to take three to six months for the market to really know who the fuck you are. So you're going to spend six months writing it. You can spend six months writing it. You can spend six months promoting it to the point when 
you're ready to drop it. People are like, where's the book? I'm ready. You've been talking about it for six months. Start promoting that bitch as soon as you write it or even a month before and start doing some testing because once again, if you write a book, like I can write this book and I already know based upon testing I've done, and this is the title, How to Get All the Pussy You Can Handle, A Man's Dating Guide. I throw that title up there, that book's going to sell. Why? Because guys don't care about personality. You know, they'll come like, you know, like, oh, yeah, baby. Oh, then one day it's like, wow, she's cool to hang out even when I'm not fucking her. Then that's when the relationship starts. I write that book. It's going to sell. I go on every man blog, every man show. And then it was like, man, this title, man, this title, man. I read the book. I love it. <laughs> My goodness. So why would that book work? Because that's what that market wants. That's what they want. That's why when I was writing my dating book, I changed that shit up because I wasn't the guy to give these women, because that's who we're going to be buying it, what they wanted. I knew this and I bailed. That's like, this is not going to work out. I don't want to be the dating book guy. I don't want to be that motherfucker. I, I jumped out. Uh, Erica, I got a 72 year old client whose daughter helps him. For real, direct mail, <laughs> direct mail works for him. He's in real estate. You retire when you feel like it, pretty much. No, the erotica writing is not a smart way to bootstrap a fund of business. Okay. With that market and using Amazon, your income is going to do this. There was this guy talking about that people were going to write books and they were going to sell forever and their income was going to go up. I knew that was bullshit. That required that that marketplace stays the same for the most part. No marketplace stays the same. And it takes a lot of time. Like, I could write a book in a week. If that's all I did, I could write a, you know, seriously, a 50, 60 page book. I mean, 50, 60,000 word book in a week. But that's seven days getting down. That's uh, five to 10 word, thousand words a day. That's hard. That's real, real hard. So, you got that. It's not probably the best way to fund the business. Uh, to me, this is just my opinion. If you like writing, it's great. If you don't like writing, you're trying to write to make some money, it's just going to drive you crazy. It's going to frustrate you and you're probably not going to win. Just my thoughts. Uh, Douglas, here's my thing and for you folks. The best way to ensure that your ass can retire if you're 20, start a business. If you're 30, start a business. Set goals that you're going to have this business get to a point where let's 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 forget hustler porn numbers. Let's say you are in Kalamazoo, Michigan or somewhere and you start a small general store. You first thing you want to do is get it up and running and get the building paid off, right? Then you get the building paid off. Maybe that takes 10 years. Then you get some other stuff going on. You get a process, you get a training system going on. And so in 20 years, this business is making more money than it was when you started it. The building's paid off and you can go fly fishing whenever the fuck you want. That's how you're going to have a really good retirement. I don't, you know, like Vanguard and the stock market, the capital markets and all this other stuff. There's just stuff I'm not in. And also, I just think a perpetual business, this is a business that you start, that you're not building to sell, even though you should build business to sell, that you just keep going on and on and on. You get a durable market, some boring shit like dry cleaning, a laundromat, a car wash, or a simple uh, menu restaurant. These are businesses that go on for decades. They make money and you do what you want. To me, that's retirement. Uh, okay, Lawrence Q, do you have an experience with private lady selling on Amazon? Any tips on driving outside traffic to an Amazon listing? Okay, let's let's use better terminology. Creating products from scratch, I have experience. Uh, getting some cheap bullshit from China and slapping my name on it, I have no experience with that. Now there are people who get really good stuff from China and other parts of the world, and they make a very good product. It's essentially you're creating a business and you're creating a brand. Private labeling just sounds so sexy when really it's just some bullshit. Because if you take a product that 80 million people are selling, like, okay, let's take this. Uh, this is a fountain pen. Now, let's say I go to China and just break all copyright laws and have them reproduce this Waterman fountain pen. Right. I like fountain pens. They're wonderful. And I start selling them and they sell well. And then someone else does it. 
and one of them doesn't fight back, what happens? Pricing compression. So I'm playing the pricing game, and then I'm on Amazon repricing my shit because there's 30 other sellers doing the same shit, and we're all going to the bottom. Whereas if you build a real brand, something unique, something durable, communicate with the audience, talk to the audience, you don't go through that shit. So that's just my opinions on that. Do you know anything about networking at country clubs? Uh, typically, uh, if it's a certain a club with people who real with real decision makers, you got to be invited for those. What's up, Steph? <laughs> David. <laughs> I'm not writing that book. I'm not writing that. Keith, I love your statement uh, last week. Write to solve your own problems. This kicked me in the ass. Yep. Uh, we're going to appreciate advice on marketing books. I'm conflicted with three book titles for one book. How do you choose one? Which one to go with? Go on your Facebook page and say, hey, y'all, I'm thinking about naming this book this. And the book, the title that gets the most views from you know, people Probably do well in the marketplace. Uh, Tim Ferriss, that book's first name was supposed to be like How to Be a Drug Dealer. And the publisher wouldn't go for it. So that's how they came up with the four hour work week. He spent $200 testing that name. Melissa V found a warehouse on 13 acres. Uh, that sounds good. But what you want to do is, is that 13 acres near a main highway? Because you, you got your own property and you can put signage up. If it's like off the beaten path, that's not going to work. Uh, Johnny Stewart, do you think you can make a ton of money selling digital content, educating people on the use of herbs and how this is health? That is a huge fucking market, dude. I know someone that helped the company do a $30 million lunch last year selling those kind of products. 30 mil. It's very the spiritual. It's the... It's the uh, the stones and the crystals, all that. It is huge. That right there actually dovetails in with yoga. So, uh, yeah, it's huge, huge. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. No more online interviews at the moment. This year is about, let me tell you, um, doing some serious build out of an e-commerce company and i'll probably continue to do these streams you know probably not five days a week but i'll continue to do them and it's going to be about putting that together because going back to putting out a a webinar or something about writing books which i've you know collectively big and small because they're not the same size i've written like 50 books and you include the audio books and everything like 50. so and i've sold most of them off of amazon but most folks are not interested in that they're not interested in it. What did I say? Find an audience and give them what they want. I know that doing what I did is the best way because you have more durability. You own the customer. You get the customer information. But people are like, hustler porn, hustler porn, hustler porn. So they don't want that, even though it's better for them. <laughs> so I'm not messing with that. But the business thing is just, one, you do, that, you do it right, man. It just changes your life. And I'm going to stick with that. What's the best way for online marketers to prove they're legit? How would you prove that? Longevity. Anybody can be flashy for a few months or a year. But when you say, I've been doing this for eight years, 10 years, and then they go Google you and find out that, hey, it's okay. Longevity, putting out real shit, really helping, being honest. Marvis, what's, what's good? I'm at the bottom of no skills. Would you suggest I learn? Uh, for you, Marvis, service business. Dry cleaning, well, yeah, dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, mobile detailing, something that you can serve people because, one, you can make money faster, and then you can learn how to run the business, and then later on figure out something else. Broderick, the <laughs> disruptive meeting, a lot of people love that. How would you market a book without an audience? All right, I'm going to stop you there. Beyond 3.7, don't do it. Don't do it. This, do you know that overwhelmingly most books written don't sell 500 copies? Don't do it. It's not going to work out well. 
uh, Lawrence Q, that's about how my first year probably, wait a minute, what do you mean that's how your first year probably labeling went? What happened? <laughs> how would I market a book of mostly photos? You heard of a coffee table picture book, right? If the photos are banging, you know, it's, it's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, Tawana, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give you this. You're gonna have to grind, baby girl. Since you got a job, you can only do this part time. So you're just gonna have to sit up a Saturday, get some appointments, and do people's taxes on Saturday and Sunday. Let's see. Make sure my audio. Uh, boring businesses are the best. I want ten of them. Uh, I bought LA Healing Crystals weeks ago and setting up a directory site for crystal stores and they will sell ad space. Yeah, I mean, don't 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 even do that because the thing is, writing a book, and once again, you know, if you want to write a book, write it. But I'm just going to give you from the inside view. If you don't like writing, that shit's hard because even if you do like writing, it's hard. And I just, it's just not the best way to make a lot of money fast. You can make a lot of money long term, but if you're writing in the right audience, you can make a lot of money fast. But once again, it's the audience. Let's see, Uncle G, whether well, question you're a 12 o'clock straight up businessman. What do you enjoy doing for leisure outside of being a down south paper chaper? <laughs> That's funny. I go to the movies, I hang out with my friends. Uh, we started this thing. Uh, you may see some drunk live streams because we did like a test. That shit was hilarious. I don't know if I want to put that out because we were getting wild. Uh, go to the gym, read, travel, a few other things. Race to the bottom on price. And Amazon changes rules and median competitors popping up. Okay. Yeah, that's that's why I, I don't even mess with that. Um, no, I'm not doing any nights. There's too much going on. I, I actually, I wasn't even going to do any streams this week, but I figured out a way how to make it happen. Uh, my aunt, Broderick, has owned a tax business for decades. She just does a good job and strong relationship with people so they don't go anywhere. And over the years, she probably built her book of business and she just keeps growing it where the money comes. But see, that's, that's something you got to grind on. Uh, I like this. You know, CJ Lee, if your job is taking your business daytime hours, get a night shift if possible. That's what I did. You got to give priority to the biz. Well said, well said. Where are we? All right, so that was it. Be grateful for what you have. Don't throw away money that is literally landed in your lap. Don't do that. So be sure to share this stream with someone you care about. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Oh yeah, something new. Don't miss the live show, because I've noticed that a lot of people depend on that more so than the YouTube notification. So go into the stream and hit that don't miss live shores show and get on that link. So whenever I shoot some, I typically send the emails 10, 30 to 10 minutes out. I played around with it. Sending out an email about a show a week in advance is too long. I have found out that maybe even an hour is too long. <laughs> I'm serious. The best response is 15 to 30 minutes. And I've tested this for Three months now. So, yeah, that's when you'll get it. You know, typically they're going to be in the morning. They're not at the same time, but you can just look for it in the morning. All right. So with that, I am out.